From a very early age, we are asked, what do you want to be when you're older? And when we reach the age where we are about to leave school, we are usually asked the dreaded question, oh, what are you going to do next? These are big decisions we have to make, and what sometimes adds more pressure on for Christians is that we are told that God has a plan for our lives. A statement is usually said with the intention of comforting the decision maker, but it can make the decision maker think they must find out what God's special plan is for their life. And if they make a wrong decision, then they will be doomed. But this is not what the Bible teaches. You know, a common thing we young people do in our desperation to find out God's plan for our lives is we open the Bible to a random verse and in that verse we hope to find our answer. Or sometimes we look for signs which point towards the answer like Gideon laying down his fleece in Judges 6. And if we are making big decisions and are waiting for these signs from God then decision making becomes agonising. So how do we know God's will without agonising over it? Or is it even possible to know God's will for our lives? I bet the person who asks these questions are, are prone to reading the, the last page of a book before they get through the first chapter of it. I suppose a, a better question to ask is, do we have to know God's will for our lives? But before I can answer this question, it's important to point out that the Bible speaks of God's will in two ways. Uh, there's God's sovereign will and there is, there is his moral will. God's sovereign will deals with everything that comes to pass. So God knew that Jesus would die on the cross because he planned it or he preordained that it would happen exactly the way it did. It is impossible to break God's sovereign will because everything that happens is a part of it. Even evil, God planned that Judas would betray Jesus, which was a, a terribly evil act. Yet the history unfolded exactly how God planned it. It is important to uh, say that this does not mean God committed evil. And this is where his moral will comes in. God has revealed his moral will to us in scripture. And his moral will is always righteous. His moral will is uh, an expression of it, who he is and how we should live. The Ten Commandments is one of the best examples, I suppose, of God's moral will revealed in Scripture. And we can break these, but He can't. And it pleases God when we follow His moral will, and it displeases Him when we don't. So, what has this got to do with our everyday decision making? Well, when making decisions, the thought, is this in God's sovereign will, should never come up because his sovereign will will unfold exactly as he planned, no matter what we decide. So there's no point in agonizing over finding out God's sovereign will. But God's moral will is what we should be spending our time thinking about when making decisions. God may not reveal to us what our future career will be now, but he tells us in scripture, according to his moral will, it is good to work. So we should find work and, and love the people who are around us, serving God where, wherever we are. And God gives us the freedom to choose or change what career path we take, as long as it doesn't affect his moral will. So the answer to the question before, uh, do we have to know God's will? Well, yes and no. No, we don't need to know his sovereign will, for that will unfold for us to see in our rear view. And yes, we do need to know and obey his moral will found in Scripture. And according to Scripture, we are to trust him and his good sovereign will. As Romans 8, 28 says, we know that for those who love God, and all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. One of the reasons why I love hearing testimonies is because through them we hear the unfolding of God's sovereign will. We look back through someone's life and we can clearly see how God has been orchestrating and, and everything and working everything together. Here is Chloe on her story of how she learned to trust in a God who is sovereign and good.
So it's, it's great to have you on uh, episode four of the podcast. I always forget what episode it is. <laughs> I don't know what, what one it is, but... Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, so introduce yourself to, to everybody listening. Who, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I am Chloe and I live in Riff Island. Um, I have one brother. Um, I play and teach the piano and I've just finished a degree in theology. Okay, right. Where, where were you studying? Uh, Belfast Bible College in Dunmurray. So. And you've just finished it? Yeah, you know, yeah okay. just finished. Very good, very good. Um, so uh, I suppose you're, you're here on, you're on here to, to tell your story. Yep. Um, so where, whereabouts do you, do you start? What, was, what were the early years like or how, how did you first hear about God, I suppose? Yeah, so um, I was brought up in a Christian home. Um, I was very fortunate to have that Christian influence around me from a very young age. And um, I suppose I learned a lot of my Bible knowledge and about God um, from the Baptist church in Riff Island. Um, we were sent to every Bible club that was going, whether it was Baptist, Presbyterian, Elam, you name it, we were there. Yep. Um, so a lot of my knowledge does come from the Baptist church. Um, I think when I was about five or six, I was able to recite the names of the books of the Bible in order. Right. Could you do it now? I probably <laughs> could. <laughs> um, okay. No, no, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, yeah, so... Um, a lot of my knowledge comes from there, um, as well as other places. Um, but I think I, I learned most about God when I gave my life to him um, when I was about six. So I can remember being at the Baptist Good News Club um, and they were talking about heaven and hell and how we needed to be saved to go to heaven. Um, and I just remember thinking that heaven sounded so wonderful um, and that I wanted to go there. And so when I came home, um, I went to my bedroom, closed my door, and I think I got down on my knees at the side of my bed. Um, and I just prayed and asked God to forgive me and to come into my life. And um, so from that day on, I suppose I haven't really looked back. Yeah. Um, so mm. that's kind of how I came to know God. Um, and I'm just really thankful to my parents for um, bringing me that far. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for giving us that Christian influence at home. Mm. Mm. Yeah, same with my story really. I was around that age mm -hmm. whenever I committed my life to Christ. Um, but I know for me it wasn't always plain sailing, like a, I had struggles. Did you find that as well? Yeah, um, so when I was about eight, um, my mum, myself and my brother were in a car accident. Um, when a drunk driver did a hit and run on us um, and it wasn't serious as in nobody ended up in hospital but um, serious enough that we're still feeling the effects now mm -hmm. maybe 14 years later or something um, so yeah that that hit me quite a lot um, I suppose at the time I was only eight so I didn't really understand what had happened or why it had happened um, but as time went on I kind of um, realised what had really happened and started to get a bit angry, I suppose, with God um, for, for putting us through that, I suppose. Um, but after quite a few rounds of counselling um, and after a few years of kind of pulling away from everything and mm -hmm. like I remember sitting in church, um, I grew up in Love Brooklyn Presbyterian Church, right, so... Yeah. Um, I remember sitting in church not really wanting to be there, which just wasn't really me. Mm. Um, so I would have sat and doodled on the order of service for the right. whole service. Right. Um, yeah, I suppose after quite a few rounds of counselling, um, I started to slowly come back to God and started to trust him a bit more again. And I think I kind of realised that um, even though our lives had changed quite dramatically, Mm -hmm. um, God was quite merciful to us that night. Um, it could have gone a lot worse and we could have been hurt a lot more, but we weren't. Um, we were able to get on with our lives as normal, um, yeah, yeah. even though a few things had changed. But 
we were able to kind of get on with things. So God was merciful to us and he saved us from further harm. So mm. Um, mm. once I realised that, I started to kind of slowly come back to God again. Very good, yeah. And you were saying how uh, you felt angry at God. How did that affect you in just everyday life? Yeah, um, so whenever I became quite angry, I started to kind of withdraw from a lot of things. Um, even if mum and dad were going out somewhere for the day, I stayed at home. Um, I, I suppose looking back, I was probably quite depressed. Um, mm. At that age, I didn't even know depression existed. Mm. Um, so I, I suppose at that stage, I probably was. Um, spent a lot of time on my own. Um, in a dark room, sleeping, um, just didn't really want to be around people. So, um, and it stopped me from really being confident in myself, yeah, um, yeah. or being confident in who God is. Yes. Um, I was that child in Sunday school that knew all the answers and made sure everybody knew it. Mm. So to go from that to not actually wanting to be at church or Sunday school was quite a dramatic thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quite a dramatic difference I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so as a, uh, you talked a little bit about your kind of progression and, and uh, I suppose engaging more in, in Christian faith. Mm -hmm. uh, talk, could you talk a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, um, so whenever I started to kind of come back to God, um, I started to make more Christian friends in school. Um, we joined a small group in Scripture Union, um, which my small group leader ended up being your sister Zoe. Right. Okay. Um, she was my first small group leader, um, and she was she was a great influence on me. She just totally, she always has been. To be fair. Right. <laughs> um, but I I think I spent that sort of first year, um, just kind of absorbing everything but not really participating in any discussion. Okay. Um, I think I sort of was going through a transition in my mind to kind of come back to God completely. Um, but I didn't want anyone to know that I'd even pulled away from him. Right. Um, right. So yeah, I think I spent that whole year just kind of absorbing everything that I could mm. um, and learning as much as I could. and spending as much time with God as I could. And what does, what does that look like? Um, just going to church, enjoying being in church, um, worshipping him at home and really in everything that I did, mm. um, whether it was revision or homeworks or whatever, um, doing it to the best of my ability, just so that it was glorifying God, mm. um, rather than just kind of giving up and not really bothering. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also reading my Bible and learning from that and spending more time in prayer. Mm. Um, just spending time with God on my own, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I started to kind of come back to God and um, then I think it was September 2014, um, I can remember being in church um, in the Brooklyn that morning and there was a speaker from Fields of Life there okay. um, and I don't even remember what he was talking about but I just remember sitting at the back of church like just crying uncontrollably mm. um, and when I got home I cried even more um, but I knew it came from God and I knew it was a sign that I needed to get right with God again. Mm. Um, so I recommitted my life to him that day um, and just prayed and asked for forgiveness and asked that he would be with me as I walked through life um, and just recommitted to him and everything that I did. Yeah. And what does life look like since, since that? Um, life has had its ups and downs as usual. I think everyone's lives do, but um, it has been challenging but it has been great to have God walking alongside me and um, having someone to go to with all my problems and mm. um, knowing that he has the power to fix them and um, if that's what he wants and um, so yeah it just it's great having it's like having a best friend yes that you 
sort of share with other people, but you don't really. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's he's just yours. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been great. Mm. Um, and me, me and you been to Romania together. Mm -hmm. uh, has that had any? I know you've been out a, a good few times now. Has that had any impact on, on you as well? Yeah, that that has totally changed me as a person and as a Christian. Not that there's really any difference, but um, I was very, very timid and very shy before I went. Um, and I knew second and third had taken a team before I recommitted my life to God. Right. Um, but I knew at the time I wasn't ready for that. Um, but a couple of Sundays after, um, you were having your service, or your like coming home service, where you got up and spoke about your trip. Yeah. Um, and because my two cousins had been on the trip, I came round to hear it. Mm. And I remember coming out through the door and shaking hands with your dad, and saying, um, "Are you taking a team next year? Because if you are, I'm going." Yeah. Um, yeah. And he didn't even know who I was at that point. So right. that's how long ago that is. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then really from there, um, Norman and Linda, the missionaries, they came to church um, and spoke about the work that they do out there. And I came again to hear them. And really, I just sat there the whole time and just thought, I have to do this. Mm. Um, and so I didn't even think about it. I didn't pray about it, anything, because I knew I would talk myself out of it if yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that afternoon I had my name down and I think that night at Youth Fellowship I paid my deposit mm. um, and that was kind of it yeah. um, until about a few days before when I was ready to pull out because I was so nervous. Right. Um, but I knew God wanted me to go and I knew it was something I had to do. Um, so when the time came um, it just it totally changed me. Mm. Um, lifelong friendships made, just so much more confidence in myself and in God. Um, I'm just so much more thankful for everything that I had. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it just totally changed me. Um, and now here we are five years later and I've been like six times. Yes. Um, yeah. And I would have been there right now if coronavirus hadn't happened. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it just, it has totally changed me. Brilliant. I know for me it was just a real humbling experience. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's images of it being in the Gypsy Village that have just stayed with me, and it's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But um, would you encourage anybody else to, oh, yeah. if they have the <laughs> chance, to go? Yeah, um, I think really Romania is one of those things you just have to do it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people say to me, I could never do that. I could never go out there. I'd be an emotional wreck. Mm. But it's it's kind of surreal um, when you're there. It's only really, I think, when you come home that it kind of hits you. Yeah. Um, but if you go with the right intentions, like I usually do, because it is, it is very emotional when you're there and you see what they have or don't have. Um, but I think if you go with the intention of serving God and serving the people in the way that they deserve, yeah. um, I think that's when you realise that you can do anything. Mm. Um, if God wants you to go, you have to go. Yeah. Um, and you talked a little bit about doing a theology degree also. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how did you end up, end up doing that? Yeah, so it's quite a long story, so I'll try and keep it kind of short. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, but I basically always knew I wanted to do music at university. Um, I've always had a passion for music, but mm. um, when it came round to results day, after I did my A-levels, um, I didn't get the grades that I needed, but they also left me waiting for a decision too long that I couldn't apply for anywhere else. Yeah, um, yeah. So Long story short, I ended up working the next year in the academy, um, just kind of doing work shadowing and that kind of thing, um, and teaching piano at home and in a music school, um, and repeated one of my A-levels so that I could apply again for music, because mm -hmm. that, was, that was the only option in my eyes. Um, but I suppose that year, I kind of 
God was changing my heart um, and I spent a lot of time at home um, in his word and in prayer and I spent a lot of time praying that he would do what he wanted in my life and that I would follow wherever he led mm, me. Yeah. Um, and so when results day came around again, I didn't get the grades I needed again. Um, and God sort of led me to Belfast Bible College um, through a friend who suggested it. And right. I never even heard of it. Didn't even know where Dunmurray was. Yeah. So um, really within two weeks, I had been to an open day, applied, had my interview, got accepted and started as a theology student. Um, something that was never on my radar, but it has been a great decision and a, a really good, um, a really good way just to grow um, in knowledge and in love of God, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Um, and has that had any impact on you since since studying it? Yeah. Studying theology. Um, I've learned a lot. Um, it has stretched me quite a lot and stressed me out and confused me because I was all of a sudden in with all these conflicting views and because mm. um, obviously different denominations have different views about certain things so um, because it wasn't a Presbyterian college or a Pentecostal college you had everyone right across the spectrum yeah, yeah. Um, so I learnt a lot from everyone and I think that was kind of when I realised what my views actually were. Okay. Um, I don't think we really think about that. You just kind of go with whatever your church yeah. sort of teaches. Yeah. Um, but I realised um, what I believed about certain things. Um, and just having that opportunity to read my Bible and study it for assignments mm -hmm. um, and different aspects of it and really I suppose the thing that kind of consolidated all of that was um, when I had started Bible college and um, really by the end of my first year um, I started struggling with my mental health um, and really from that car accident that I was in when I was younger mm -hmm. um, I started to have quite bad anxiety and panic attacks and um, like I remember driving to uni one day and there was a car accident had happened on the motorway as there quite often is. Um, and whenever I drove past it, I had to pull in because my panic attack was that bad and it was late for class. Um, but yeah, I started to really struggle. Um, and I suppose college kind of helped with that because there was a real sense of God um, mm. in every class, lectures prayed at the start and end of classes and um, we had our own worship service every week and um, our own small groups and um, that was all a massive part in me kind of getting well again I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I eventually um, realised that I had PTSD from that car accident and went through quite a few rounds of counselling um, and eventually got over that um, mm. but I suppose anxiety and depression are still quite a very real part of my life and um, they never really went away and mm. um, so doing a theology degree where you're meant to trust God all the time and um, there's a certain pressure around it where yeah. everyone's like you're the Bible college student you should know the answer to this yes, um, yes. that was was quite hard um, to kind of be this Bible college student that knew everything, but also um, to struggle quite a lot. Mm. Um, so things like anxiety, like I couldn't really come to church anymore um, because I was coming to church and shaking the whole time and not actually hearing a word that Seamus was saying. Mm. Um, or like the depression side of things, like. I mean, suicidal thoughts are quite real, um, and a lot of people experience it. Um, it's just it's something that's not really talked about enough, I don't think. No. Especially in churches, because there's nothing, there's there shouldn't be a stigma around it because people in churches suffer just as much as anyone else. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. I suppose Bible college has helped in that I've been sort of in that Christian bubble 
mm. um, where I've had people being able to pray with me when I'm struggling or pray for mm. me. Um, my lectures were more than good um, to kind of be there for me and understand when I was struggling to get my assignments done. Um, but even just having assignments to do kind of kept me focused yeah, on yeah. God and focused on reading his word. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it has been bittersweet um, because I really enjoyed it and I've learned so much. Um, but it also has been one of the hardest periods of my life. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, thank you for sharing, Echo. That was, was lovely. Mm -hmm. um, well, do you have any encouragements for, for anyone in the church or outside the church that you can think on the top of your head? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just, I suppose, from a personal point of view, because I've been struggling for quite a few years now, um, and it was very hard to, to talk to people who especially went to church. Um, just because I think there is that stigma where if you're a Christian, you're supposed to have this perfect life. Mm. Um, so I suppose just anyone that's struggling that don't think that you have to be perfect um, to be a Christian. There's no one is perfect. Mm. Um, and not to suffer in silence. Always ask for help. Um, there's always help and there's always going to be a way to help you mm. um, but also if you don't want to talk to people talk to God um, because he is powerful enough to be able to help us mm. That's great. So, yeah. thank you very much Chloe no thank you